the railways. This is quite an easy section actually, not too difficult. You can also look in your books. It is a little bit further down, I think it's chapter eight. Why do we have railways, especially in South Africa? South Africa lacks a navigable rivers. We can't really even navigate our rivers. We can't really uh, use boats on our rivers, okay? But a long haulage distances are required and that's where railways offer a nice means of transport, especially mass transport. Heavy haul rail transport is used to transport ores from mines, like you can see in that picture. This whole thing, this comes from Shishan Mine, it's iron ore, that whole thing is the actual train. All right, commuting by rail has declined in South Africa since the introduction of combi taxis. So what is a permanent way? The most important fixed asset in a rail transport system is the permanent way. It utilize, utilizes several components, which are steel rails, timber, concrete sleepers, and a stone ballast. The function is to provide lateral, which is side guidance, to the, to the rolling stock. Rolling stock is the nice word for rail trucks, which is the wheels of the of the train using a rail line. Underneath, sleepers are large stones called ballasts to provide further support and stability. So that's a picture of it. You get your rail at the top, you get a sleeper, and then you get a ballast cushion, which is all those rocks. Then just as a normal road, you get all the subgrades, subgrades, the subsoils and subbases. And then you then this is basically your road surface gets replaced by all of that. There's a couple of definitions actually to remember in this one. Uh, page 178 for railways will be important for you. Uh, it's made of steel and used to guide rolling stock. Like I said, rolling stock is your wheels on your train. And you get a sleeper, not the guy on the track, but it is the concrete under him. It is made of concrete and is used to support the rail. So that is this concrete strip under here. Then you get your ballast. It is large aggregates, larger than uh, 37 millimeters. It's large aggregates overlying the formation and supporting the sleeper slash rail combination. So you can see, here yeah, the ballast is and it's supporting these two. It also provides protection for the formation. So the formation is whatever is under here. So this protects the layers under that and it keeps this upright as well. So it's very important actually. <clears throat> so now we talk about formation. It's similar to that of a road structure and consists of compacting in situ or selected materials. So when you look here, you get your wheel, your rail, your sleeper, and you get your ballast, which is your rock, or your sleeper is here, then you get your ballast. Then you get your formation layers. Right, so formation layers is your sub-base, sub-grade, all that stuff. Okay, another important definition to remember is a gauge. That is the horizontal distance between two rails taken center to center. In South Africa, the distance is 1065 millimeter millimeters so you can see from this picture over here where we actually fall we fall in here in between and yeah it's funny how we can study this as engineers but the guys in charge that gives out millions of rands don't buy the right trains to sometimes actually fit on these rails and then nothing is done about that so yeah just always keep in mind what the gauge of South Africa is. There is a standard. We use one standard in South Africa. There isn't different standards. Some countries do that, but not usually. Usually you have one standard in one country. So that's just what I've been explaining. You have your rail, your sleeper, your ballast. In this base course, sub A, sub grade is the same as in roads. But this whole, th these three are all formation. That's formation. Okay, rail properties. Rails should have the following properties. They should withstand shock loads, resist high contact or and 
other stresses that cause abrasive forces and metal flow. Conform to close tolerances. There can't be any deviancy of it. Must be chemically sound. So you can weld on it, cut it, drill it. It should be planed and shaped. It should be free from metallurgical and mechanical defects. So no rust and that type of stuff. These are the three types of rail joints that have been classified as follows. Welded, fish plated and insulated. So welded joints, joints you get a flash butt welded using a thermit welding method. So this is a thermit welding method. It's actually quite obvious. You can read up a little bit more about that, but basically it's a heated metal mixture. You pour it in between two railways that you want to join into a cast that joins the two together. You remove the cast, everything's good. That word over here should be thermit, not thermite, sorry. Okay, and then you get a very smooth finish over there. It looks like one rail. You can basically just clean that off a little bit and then you're good to go. That's one we see a lot in South Africa, the thermit one. Then fish plated joints. So it's a four hold fish plate and it uses bolts to fasten this plate. You can see there's four bolts in there. And you get a insulated joint. It looks a lot like the fish plate, but it is also it is also thermite welded at the same time or glued on there. And you get a four bolt one and a six bolt one to do that. Okay, then you get sleepers. There's a lot more on it on page 180. You get concrete ones, wooden ones, and steel sleepers. Other functions of sleepers include spreading the load over a wider area of the ballast. Maintaining the, ga the gauge width between the two rails and providing the required inclining bedding. All right, so these are very important for strength. It's important to uh, take the weight of the, the train and kind of distribute it over the whole distance here over the ballast. And then it also provides an incline and it spaces these gauges out perfectly. Okay, then you get fasteners. Fasteners, this stuff holding the rail in place. They secure ra rails on the sleepers and restrict movement. Fastening must provide strong bond, prevent creep, provide electrical insulation, and have good fatigue resistance. So there's the one you get. First one you get, you can see it kind of does that and it has a little clip over here and it's bolted in there. Then the fist fastening, it's a whole system as well. You get this base plate, you get a pin and this clip. The clip goes in or the base plate goes in, the clip goes in, the pin goes in and you're done. A good ballast should be strong, hard wearing, stable, drainable, easy to clean, workable, resistant to deformation, easily available, and reasonably cheap to purchase. These are actually two more points. I just forgot to make it two more bullets. So yeah, there's a quite a few to remember. Good quality track ballast is made of crushed natural rock with particles between 28 millimeters and 63 millimeters. And usually it's angular stones. Ballast. A good ballast should be, like I said, th there's all your points. And the thickness of them depends on the size and the spacing of the ties. And the amount of the traffic expected on the line and, the vi and various other factors. An insufficient depth of the ballast. Remember the ballast is the rocks. Overload the underlying soil in the worst cases, this can cause a track to sink. And if the track sinks, you can get a, a, a train to go off the rails. Okay, so a couple of things that they use for the ballast you get a ballast regulator. You can see it pushes the, the gravel in there. 
you get the leveling of a ballast between rails, ballast plow, ballast tamper, closer look at it. The railroad switch, the turnout switch, is a mechanical installation enabling trains to be guided from one track to another at a railway junction. This thing explains it nicely and you can see that's where it would do it. Okay, then you get a crossing or a crossover. A crossover is a pair of switches that connects the two parallel rail tracks allowing a train in one track to cross over to the other. So then you're talking about the switches over here. A couple of examples of trains that you might know, the Gau train, some interesting facts over there. Tunneling is important a lot of times for railways, viaducts as well. We don't well, Gautrain has a couple of viaducts as well. Then you also get bridges for it. So railways uses a lot in the construction industry. 